Okay, yes. During the talk there, you just mentioned that the communists usually win. It was one exception to that, but then you kind of jumped on. on. Yes. Well, was the exception? Is that uh, very, there? very recently. Yes, I jumped on. Um, General Franco, Spain. The civil war, or the civil war, as it's named by the left. The crusade is its name by the right. War 1936 to 1939, for the purposes of saving Catholic Spain. The motivation of Franco, or at least, maybe he wasn't himself to begin with, a very pious man, but the motivation of his soldiers was uh, the, the saving of, the, of Catholic Spain. Therefore, God was on their side in a way he wasn't on the side of Hitler, because Hitler was not fighting for the Catholic Church. Hitler was fighting for the nation of Germany. Uh, Mussolini was sort of half and half, therefore Mussolini was not smashed to pieces like Hitler was, or Italy was not smashed like Germany was, but it wasn't uh, in the clear like Spain was. So that's the, well, that's the one outstanding example in modern times of the communists being accused. Because they were fighting for God. If you want to win a right-wing cause today, attached, attached back to God, to Jesus Christ and to the Catholic Church, then you're going to have a powerful ally behind you. Your motivation is also going to be cleaned up, so to speak, and uh, you've got a, a strong unifying factor. But you don't know, do you know the problem today? The bishops will be against you. You try fighting for a good cause today, which is God's cause, it's unspeakable, unspeakable. The bishops, again and again, they take the wrong side. They take, they're socialists and communists and globalists. They've, they've lost their Catholic heads. It's unbelievable, but it's the reality. Thank you for being here. It's a joy, joy to see you, to see you so much on YouTube. And seem to be on the rise, uh, certainly in Europe, and are there any nationalist movements that you see of uh, uh, understanding that there's nothing without the faith? Um, nationalism is half and half. Um, nationalism arises with the nations. The nations only arise from the breakdown of Christendom, or the splitting up of Christendom. Once the nations split up, they began fighting one another. We had the two terrible world wars because the, uh, the nations uh, went to one another. The wars in the Middle Ages were lightweight affairs because everybody was Catholic. Therefore, there, there were agreement of war, days you wouldn't fight war, you wouldn't be fighting because they were days of Catholic peace or whatever. Um, and so on. So, um, Nationalism is better than Masonic internationalism. It's not as good as Catholic internationalism. And when the nations break up, then the, Mace, the Freemasons come along and say, you, you shouldn't be fighting one another, we've got to stop these wars. Let's get together in a human organization, and that's Freemasonry, it's the United Nations, which is terrible. And, and now globalism, and as you say, a, a lot of the globalism and the power of the Jews, and the Jews organized and paid for Muslim invasion or Muslim uh, immigration, and they are enemies of the church, and they are, they are wanting to dilute the nations, because the nations are still half Catholic, so to speak. They are a relic of Christendom. They are the pieces into which Christendom was broken up. But, but once Christendom is broken up, then the nations are tempted to want to get together again. They're going to try to put themselves together. And then the Masons come along and say, Look, let's do it on the Judeo-Masonic plan. We Jews and we Masons know how to stitch you all together again. And once you're stitched together again, you're all going to be happy and wonderful. Of course, that's not true at all, because the world is going to be absolutely miserable. It's going to be a Judeo-Masonic tyranny. So nationalism, resisting Judeo-Masonry is excellent. Um, not Falling, not turning back to Christendom is not excellent. 
It's, it's, tr it's trying to keep the fruits without going back to the roots. The roots of United Nation, of the, of the nations of Europe united, and each nation being entirely itself. It's the Catholic Church that molded and made the nations of Europe. And it's the Catholic Church that's needed to uh, pull them, to, pull them together in, back together in the right way. A, little, a tiny little example. Uh, back in 1982, there was the War of the Falkland Islands. And um, uh, no, before the War of the Falkland Islands, there was, the, uh, there was the, the threat of war between Chile and Argentina. And they appealed to Britain to arbitrate. And Britain arbitrated, but it wasn't satisfactory. Britain didn't have the authority to impose I don't know whether Britain was right or wrong, but it didn't have the authority to impose its solution on Chile and Argentina. They then appealed to the Pope. The Pope arbitrated, and that was the end of the problem of, the, of a war, the threat of war between Chile and Argentina disappeared. Then the bad guys got Argentina to invade the Falkland Islands, which of course they were treading on the lion's tail. He's a pretty old and worm-eaten lion, but nevertheless, he put together a fleet, went down to the South America, and reclaimed the Falkland Islands. And, in other words, and that, that is what got rid of the right-wing government in Argentina. A very clever move. The, the enemies of God are clever. And, they, and the, the nations, the, the good guys in the nations are not usually clever enough unless they do the one really clever thing, which is to turn back to God. Now, Putin is presiding over a considerable revival of religion and return to God in the Russian people. And he mentions it, he mentioned it just recently. He says, all of you lot are going to drop dead. Well, we, we, have, we, we have the faith, we're going to be martyrs. You lot in the West, you're going to just drop dead. <laughs> Funny, <laughs> amusing crack. But it's, there's something serious. He is, he is, he, I think, I may be wrong, I may be underinformed, but I think he is promoting the, the development of religion, especially in the armed forces of Russia. And if the Russians go to war for God, you know, with their icons in front as they used to do, watch out Western Europe. Because Western Europe has got no such motivation. All it's got is weapons which it thinks are going to do the trick, but it's not weapons that do it, as the psalmist says. So I think that Putin, Putin is, is attaching Russian nationalism to religion. And that's putting stuffing into it. Not only stuffing, but also direction, control, sanity. I, may, I don't want to idealize, but um, I don't want to idealize more than corresponds to the reality. But there's an example of nationalism stronger and stronger because it's under God. So any nationalist movement strongly needs to be... It, it, I say, I mean, I, we meet right-wing youngsters come towards religion or towards the Catholic religion from right-wing politics. They're often, it's, they're good material, but they're often not wanting God. If they don't want God, they're not going to have any real strength. What, what, are, they, what are they then fighting for? Something really human. But, but what the war going on in the world today, generally, it is absolutely and fundamentally a war for or against God. So that's what the nationalists need to see and they will become much stronger. Then they, will, they may even forget about their own country, which is not bad. If, if they're fighting for God, no problem is, because then God will look after their country. So our Lord said to St. Teresa of Avila, you look after my interests and I will look after yours. Nationalists look after God's interests and he will look after theirs. <laughs>